Hi there. In the last Razorback installment, we looked at the pneumatic kickstands and we added a couple of fittings and hoses to it. In this episode, I'd like to take a quick look at how we can make those animate nicely. So the end result is that we're going to want to be able to pose and position this bike in different sort of stances. We've already taken care of the steering by adding a control for it up here. So we can easily adjust the steering along with all of the steering mechanisms that sort of hinge on it. And that works really well. So we're going to do the same thing but for the kickstands. We can start off by identifying our kickstand pivot. Right now it's a cylinder and in most cases where we need to animate something, I like to put a null object around it. So it's really easy when you have an object that's the correct access orientation and everything, you can just group it. Um, so I just group it into null one, rename that kickstand pivot null maybe. So now we have a null object that we can use to control this pivot. Now we already know how we want it to pivot, roughly up to about that level and then back to zero. So we can start by making a slider that just lets us do that. I'm going to try something here just for improved visibility. I'm going to create a, an orange material that we can apply to the actual parts we're working on. I'm wondering if it will help us focus. So just bear with me while I create that. Cool. So we now have our pivot part and the rest of the bike. So what we can do is we can look at where this is linked to and just do the same thing. So I believe it's the main Razorback Expresso tag. And the main Razorback null object has this steering control on it right down here. So what we would do is create some new user data and this time it's going to be kickstands. And it's animatable. Data type is going to be float. Interface, float slider. Unit, percent. Percent sounds about right. 0 to 100 percent. So the default value will be 0. We can always change that, I believe. So once we've created that, we have some more data now. We have kickstands. So I believe we can just add it to the viewport. It'd be nice if we can add them both as one so we can select both of these and drag them out into the viewport. That didn't quite work. Let's try that again. Actually, I think, yeah, it's down here. Add to HUD. There we go. So we can have it as one unit now. And I believe we can say show display show always. So this is always going to be here. So we can adjust the steering and the kickstands. So right now the kickstand slider doesn't do anything. But we can change that by going into this Expresso tag where we are currently doing all of the math involved for the steering. So we already have our Razorback node here that outputs the steering. So we just need to add the kickstand property to it. So now we have 0 to 100 for the kickstands. So the first thing we want to do is create a range mapper that can handle the rotation of the kickstands. So the best way to do this, I think, is um, just copy one of your existing ones, although this already has a curve applied to it. Well, we can just get rid of that. So I can just control C, control V, and then I can right click here and say reset. So you plug the kickstands to the input and you change the input lower to zero, input upper to 100. Input range should be percent instead of degrees and output is degrees. So now we can just plug this into our kickstand rotation. So we created a null for that earlier, right there. And we can output to the pitch coordinate. 
So rotation P and let's see what that looks like. So now if we rotate the kickstands, it works but not quite the way we want. At 0% the kickstand should map to 0 and at 100% it should map to, we can just interactively adjust this until we find a value that we're happy with. There we go, 65, nice round number. So there we go, simple as that. We now have a slider that we can use to control the kickstand. But this only makes our issue worse, where we see the hoses intersecting. The great part about using a slider interface for something like this is that you can actually use that slider to drive more than one thing. Right now we're just driving the rotation, but we can actually bend these hoses and drive that as well. So let's see how that works. We have a sweep nerves right here for the hoses. So let's rename those uh, kickstand lines. So the kickstand lines object is currently not replicated to the other side. Let's fix that. So let's see, we have a null object here. This null object handles all the symmetry, so let's just put it in there. So now we have kickstand lines on both sides, fittings on both sides, and we can now prepare to put our bend deformer. So I'm just going to create a bend deformer, our simplest deformer starts off really big but we can just scale it down and then from the side view we can simply position it to where it needs to be roughly and rotate it a little bit notice a little orange handle that's where it bends so we want it to sort of flow at the same direction as these lines and then we go to the top view and position it there so we sort of rotate it again. So currently we just have a bend deformer and I don't think we're gonna get this right the first time. We're gonna have to play with it a little bit, but that's okay. What we can do is understand that this is zero. This is where the slider is zero. This is where the kickstand rotation is zero. This is where the hoses correctly route into the machine. So this is a great starting point. We wanna get to the end result, however. So if we slide the kickstand rotation all the way to the end, oops, see I missed something. I need to put this bend deformer in the hierarchy where it can deform the kickstand lines. Now I don't want it deforming all the parts of this kickstand. I want it to just deform the lines. So they need to be grouped together. So I can just group those together. And now I have kickstand lines and a bend. And I'll call this lines bender. Why not? So now we have a bend deformer that only affects the lines. Perfect. Now the bend deformer has a couple of parameters, strength, angle, and keep y-axis length. It also has the mode, limited, unlimited, within box. These are all pretty standard. What we want to do is rotate the kickstand until it's in its stressed position and then adjust the bend deformer. So if we adjust the strength, you see it bends out towards us. We can also adjust the angle to negative 90 degrees so it bends in the direction that we expect and then we can sort of adjust the strength until it's back to where it needs to be now we can already see some problems uh, it's bending outwards so that's not really what we want we can try rotating the bend deformer a little bit to fix that kind of works um, another problem we can see is that it's sort of is bending unrealistically just this little segment here is bending perhaps we can move where the bend deformer starts its deformation to sort of fix that and there's also this keep y-axis length option and we can play with that so we see that when the keep y-axis length option is on it's more of a it's more of a realistic bend almost like you'd bend a hose and it doesn't stretch the object you might want that as well if we increase the Y size of the bend deformer, we can get different effects as well. So for now, let's just kind of try to tweak it and find our end result. So perhaps if I were to bend it a little bit more and change the angle, 
so that it still routes into the machine. Okay, let's bring the bend strength down a little bit. And that kind of looks like what we want. We want it to just route around into the machine. I'm just going to try to move this deformer a little bit forward so it's not so tight. And that's starting to look like what we want. You know, we can we can move this in a lot of different ways to achieve the effect we want. The important thing to remember is that this is the end result and what we had before is zero. So now with these options set, we can sort of see what this looks like when we hook it up to the Expresso. So if we go back to our Expresso editor, we can simply drag this bend deformer in. Using another range mapper, we can basically, well, another series of range mappers, we can basically map the 0 to 100% to these values in the bend. So I'm just going to copy this range mapper twice because we are we have two values we need to set strength and angle we may not need to set angle but I'm gonna have a range mapper for it anyway and we can just plug the kickstand nodes in and then on the output we can choose what our output values are so in this case it's still degrees because the strength is in degrees and so is the angle we want the upper values to be 75 and 122 respectively so this changes to 75 are those positive or negative 75 and negative 122 and this would be negative 122 so we can basically just plug these values in 75 is going to be the object property strength and then negative 122 is going to be the object property angle so theoretically if I did everything right this should just work so there we go it doesn't quite look right though seems like it's twisting the wrong way around. Let's see what happens if we don't animate the angle. We just leave it at negative 122, disconnect it, and then just do our bend. I actually like that a lot better. So let's see what it looks like from the side. It's actually really good. Perhaps we can adjust the angle just a little bit instead of that extreme negative 122. And perhaps if we didn't use a negative number, we'd get a different result. Or perhaps we can just not make the lower value zero. This is interesting. I hadn't, this hadn't occurred to me at first. But if the upper angle is negative 122 and the lower angle is, let's say, negative 100, we may get the same effect we were looking for, but in a more subtle form. Yeah, I think that's it. So there's other things we can continue to play with. For instance, we can try different y-axis lengths. So we can increase it to almost four inches for the y-axis length of the bend. And we can see that it does change the way it looks a little bit. I think that looks really good. And in this case, I think that's what we're looking for. Let's move to the inside of the machine and just make sure things are working okay from that angle. So I'm just going to try to maneuver my camera somewhere inside of the machine where we can see things happening. And as we move our slider, you can see the hoses do move in a little bit, but that's okay. We can probably adjust our negative 122 value here in the range mapper to change that. Let's try that. So if we brought it more towards there, which now that we're looking at it from this angle, we can see is closer to the original position. It actually looks a little bit better because there's less movement in those hoses. It's important to remember we can also use curves here. For instance, I can go to 50%, grab my range mapper, and then add points in this curve so I can actually uh, let's make that a uh, let's see make that an ease ease no let's just make that soft I'm not very familiar with this curve editor so you'll have to excuse me I'm just going to reset what I really want to do is sort of unify those points so that they're both the same I don't 
remember this giving me a straight curve as the default. Here we go. It's kind of strange that I'm only getting one tangent. Well, that, that works, but it doesn't seem right. Perhaps I can delete this point. There we go. So that's what I wanted. So we can sort of cause this curve to bow upwards. And it actually gives us a different progression. And that works, that works really well. So I think that's it. Now we have our pivoting kickstands with the lines. And we also have them animated. So we can just hide the bend deformer. And then when we move the kickstand slider, the kickstands move up and down and the hoses move in a relatively realistic fashion. Maybe not absolutely realistic. And it sort of gives us that impression that they're not actually just kinking and moving like rigid objects anymore. They actually have a little bit of fluidity to them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this installment. And until next time, see ya.